I'm your host, George Wacker, and we're here today with an actor that almost needs no introduction. With an acting career spanning more than 30 years, Tony Todd has an extensive list of credits in all genres. He's appeared in more than 100 theatrical and television films and has played opposite many major Hollywood stars. He's a Hollywood star himself. His movie credits include Platoon, Night of the Living Dead, Candyman, The Crow, The Rock, Wishmaster, The Final Destination series, and many more. On stage, he has received accolades for numerous roles, including a coveted Helen Hayes Award nomination for his performance in The Captain's Tiger at the La Hala Playhouse and Manhattan Theater Club and the Kennedy Center. And while we're going to touch on those accolades, we are here today to talk about his upcoming return role in August Wilson's Fences, this summer at the Labuda Center for the Performing Arts at the Sales University in Center Valley, PA. Fences will preview at 7.30 on July 27th and 28th. Opening night is Friday, July 29th at 7.30, and the production runs through August 7th. You can get tickets at pashakespeare.org or by calling 610-282-WILL. And thank you to our sponsors, Made Possible in the Lehigh Valley. The Lehigh Valley is rich with possibilities, a proud heritage and bright future that has long attracted makers, innovators, and those with great vision. Everything you need to create the life you want on your terms, vibrant downtowns, charming main streets with surprises around every corner, and lots of open places to explore, live, work, learn, play, discover all that's made possible in the Lehigh Valley at lehighvalleymadepossible.com. Also, Molly's Irish Grill and Sports Pub, of course, and Michael Bernadine with Remax. Find Mike and you're going to find your next dream home. And now let's talk to Tony Todd. Tony Todd, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule to, to speak with us today. Um, we're, yeah. we're here today to, to talk about you know your upcoming performance at the Pennsylvania Shakespeare uh, Festival. We were asking people on Twitter, what are some questions you wanted to ask Tony Todd? And a lot of them were asking, what horror show con uh, convention is he coming for? Because so many people know you for your work in Candyman yeah. and, and Final um, Destination. Not- I'm not here to do any convention. I'm here to do the work that I love and cherish the most, which is theater. That's why I started, and that's why I always try to come back to. So, unfortunately, this time I won't be doing any signing. Although I did tell my Twitter <laughs> followers, everybody that shows up, I will sign their program for them. Sure, As, sure. Yeah, but but no, but that's what we're talking about. You know, you're you're um, returning for your role as Troy in August Wilson's Fences um, Mm -hmm. at the Shakespeare uh, Festival. Can you talk about that a a little bit? What does this uh, performance or or this play mean to you? Why does it speak to you? Uh, I've had the chance to do it once before. I have a strong connection to August Wilson. I worked with him on the um, premiere of King Hedley II at the Pittsburgh Public Theater circa 1998. Uh, along with Ella Joyce, who's another castmate of mine in this production. So I spent two years with the man. And then last year, I was here at the, at the Center Valley at uh, Pittsburgh, I mean, at the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival doing his one man show, How I Learned What I Learned. So whenever I get it, I tell my agents, I tell my managers to their chagrin that they have to carve out space for me at least once every year and a half to return to the medium that I love the most, live theater. It's where I started way back in high school, the Harvard High School in Connecticut, and uh, and where I trained. I went to the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center in Waterford, Connecticut, and then to Trinity Rep in Providence, Rhode Island, and got my master's there. So it's what gives me the most pleasure because it's the most immediate. I get to look people in the eye and the audiences and feel they feel what we're feeling. They go through what we're going through. And and then hopefully at the end of the show, they express their joy in the revelations. So it's just an honest form of, of communication. Yeah. I mean, film, I do I do a lot of film. That's great. It, it provides me an income to take care of myself and my family. Sure. And uh, not as much television as I have in the past, but it's okay. I like my days off. But when it comes <laughs> to theater, working it's a grind you know you, you gotta like just before this i just taken a 10 minute nap because i had spent two hours just going over some material for today because unfortunately our rehearsal period isn't as long as it would be traditionally. Right. we only have two so where everybody's bringing their a game 
And how is it to prepare for, you know, like a television show or a movie compared to to prepare for a live stage performance? Well, in a movie or TV, you're only doing one or two scenes a day, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just focus on these in a play, in a play like Fences, which is comparable to Shakespeare's King Lear. It's a monolith of a character with a swing of emotions and events that happen. It's, it's like studying an encyclopedia. So right. you have to not only learn the words, but then you got to find the emotional context and, um, and how to completely make this person bloom to life. And everybody in the cast, we got, we got people that are Yale trained. We got people, Ella Joyce worked with August Wilson longer than I have. Um, our director, Ryan Quinn, also Yale grad, and, uh, which is a badge of honor. And everybody's just digging deep. Um, uh, and giving everybody else the things they need to respond to. It's majestic. And our production staff is just coming up with incredible support from an incredible set to a sound design, to lighting design, to great costumes. It is going to be a wonderful ride for anybody to come see it. Yeah, and we're looking forward to it. And we're going to make sure that we let everybody know the dates and Please. everything as we come to the end of here. Please. Um, Thank you. I, I'm I'm curious. You, you mentioned growing up in Connecticut and your love for theater. What mm -hmm. was one of your first experiences as a young man? When did you decide or realize, wow, you know, this is something mm -hmm. I might want to to look into? Well, I was in high school and I had a growth spurt between um, freshman and sophomore year, and because of that, I was completely uh, uh, uncoordinated. So all the athletic departments. <laughs> They head at me thinking I was useless. And an English teacher handed me a copy of The Tempest. And from that day on, it was mm -hmm. like, it was like, I was fascinated with comic books. It was like reading a, a graphic okay. novel. Uh, and that, from that moment on, the spark hit. And I decided then and there that that's what I wanted to do. And, um, sure. and that was it. I never, I, I never doubted. A lot of people say, well, how, you know, some of the people I went to school with, some people only try to do it for two or three years. And they say, this isn't a, it's, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You got to really want it in your bones. If you can't handle that, then yeah, you should find something else to do. Get yourself a trade. This is something that lasts you for a lifetime. And it's been good to me. And mm -hmm. I hopefully good to it. And, um, and that's why I always go back to the place where it all starts on the stage. Yeah, does it does something like this kind of feed your soul in a way where you're you know you're still very active? You're learning about the play, even though you've done it previously. I'm sure you're learning new things about the play the second this time. It was a complete production than the one we did before. Every you know, it's like uh, an old actor teacher just once told me, you know, a fellow can be played by a thousand different actors and, and interpreted equally a number of times and still be relevant and, and valid. Um, sure. So, yeah, it's rewarding. Um, and when I do get to go back to my home in Marina del Rey, I'm going to be full. Mm -hmm. when, I go, when I finish this, I have like a, I have two weeks off before I do a film. And then I have, uh, I have a month off before I go over to Scotland to shoot a film with John Malkovich. So I have a full year. It's been an exciting year. My daughter is getting married in November, and uh, everything is leading up to that. So I'm sure you're excited about, yeah, you're, you must be really excited about that. Oh, I am. And I'm thrilled to death that, um, that uh, her fiance, Sean, actually called me and asked for a hand. That meant the world to me. So, well, I, this, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Well, congratulations to, to you, to her, and to him, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I have to admit, as a, you know, as a teenager, my first introduction to you was Candyman, as I think to a lot of people. And mm. I, I, you have so many fans across, you know, from horror to, to comic. I, I, and of course, we're talking about your love of theater, but where do you put some of that, some of those roles that you know you have diehard fans on? How do you kind of balance that, those genres? I show box of them. Listen, I can't walk around being an iconic <laughs> character. 24 seven, right. that's just impossible. My head will right. swell up. I know how to compartmentalize. And I appreciate those fans that have uh, contributed to my 
um, I don't know, my appreciation, my identity. Um, and I have a fond life for those. But uh, as I get older, I'm getting away from more of those. Um, I just want to do good, honest, serious work. In, in the case of Candyman, uh, the director, Bernard Rose, and I grew great friends. We just finished a film at the beginning of the um, pandemic called Traveling Light that's going to be making the rounds soon. Um, and, uh, you know, I was glad to be a part of the latest Candyman feature and we'll see what that goes. And uh, I've been working a lot in video games lately, so there's a lot of... Right. I got, I got stuff for fans of all ages about to drop, so... <laughs> well, I wonder, do you think that you're just... Uh... What allows you to be so flexible within genres? Is it just your appreciation for different types of, of oh, mediums? or I'm a kid at heart. I mean, I grew up, as I told you, reading comic books. So when, right. when the calls were coming in for video games and stuff, that was an easy fix. I have a great professional team. I have a great management, uh, Jeff Goldberg, who I've been with for over 30 years. Great the defining artist. And a great uh, voiceover agent, innovative artist. So... Um, the only thing I don't focus on so much is publicity because I'm also a very sheltered person. So, sure. um, so sometimes I have to do things, special things like what I'm doing with you today, George. Yeah, no, and I, I really, it's been fun because ever since uh, I read you were coming, I kept emailing him. Like, I hope I can get him on just uh, because we're appreciative of your work. <laughs> And they didn't tell me that the, part. They left that part. <laughs> <laughs> but in the Lehigh Valley, honestly, the um, unfortunately, there are some people who even live in the Lehigh Valley who aren't as aware of the the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival as they they should be. There, there are some in, incredible, t- including yourself. But of course, like you had mentioned, some of your castmates and the production that goes into it. There's some really top notch talent there. Absolutely, they just closed the course line here that I got to saw. And saw. It was equal to any Broadway production that you're, you're people, you know, to come out and literally be in a new environment. If you're used to an industrialization city like New York or Chicago Mm -hmm. or the Hollywood Drive of Los Angeles, to come out to a place where you're surrounded by trees and you have to do but focus on your work and the community, the actors that you're with, it just adds something special. And when Patrick Maholi, the, the artistic director, first contacted me two years ago, you know, all together, description base of over 60, 80,000 subscribers, you know, on any given season. So that's, uh, and people want, they want to, they want to revel in the eyes and they want to revel the joy of the performance that they come to witness. And hopefully that's what we bring. And as someone who, enjoys performing on stage as much as you do. Um, I, I would imagine coming out of the pandemic, being able to be in these environments again, has got to be a good feeling. A release because, you know, even today on in New York and Broadway is so touch and go. Um, they have to have double yeah. casting. Um, we have to have, we, we have a double cast here. Matter of fact, when I finish mm-hmm. this, I'm taking my, we, we do COVID tests three times a week. So it's up to us to have a responsibility not to expose ourselves um, to, you know. My uh, my wife, my wife and uh, co-business owner just attended Broadway Con in New York City last week. And and that was Mm -hmm. a mask mandatory thing. So, you know, I I think it's something that we all need to continue to just be be cognizant of. But it's great to be able to to see those performances in person again. Yes, yes. And and here we are, the Pennsylvania Shakespeare Festival, which is renowned, you know, among the theater community. Yeah, and um, we had talked about this really briefly before we came on, but you do you've had a little bit of time to explore some of the Lehigh Valley. You had mentioned uh, Hotel Bethlehem, is, is or yeah. at least Main Street. Where are some of the areas yeah. that you've uh, you've walked around? Well, all up in that area, and down Market Street, with all those beautiful homes. I mean, uh, Last year, I won money at the Wind Creek. Um, <laughs> what were you playing? Was it was it slots? Uh, I do. Yeah, I go. I do. I go to the yeah. high roller room. Play, All right. Uh, ultimate poker, and I, it's been good to me. Sure. I'm also like that, but I haven't been able to go as much this time because I got so many words that I got to put into my brain. 
Which and right. the good thing is not a struggle. It's because when you nail a line and you go back to August Wilson and you go back and realize you left out just one word that makes it sing even more, you know. And uh, and uh, but once we open, I'm gonna have friends of mine, my my daughter, um, mm-hmm. other people in my family are gonna be coming through and and sharing what we've, we've been working to create. So that's a good part. No, and this week, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, this week, uh, much to do about nothing opens um, at the theater, which uh, has a large cast, and I know they're all excited. So we all try to. I don't know if we're going to be able to see them, or if they're going to be able to see us. But just we all like give respect to each other, which is a beautiful thing. That's that's what repertory theater is about. I was so happy. And I, you kind of touched on this when, when you were talking about you have to be in it for the long haul. If you mm-hmm. were to talk to a, a young actor or actress um, who is aspiring to go down, maybe try to go down a path that you've gone down, what is some of the mm-hmm. advice beyond that being there for the long haul that you would, uh, you would recommend to them? I, I would just tell them, keep studying the arts. You know, there's a lot of great books out there. Two of my favorites are um, Declan's Actor and His Target and Boleslawski's The First Six Lessons. Reread them, find other things to keep you inspired. Live right, eat well, keep <laughs> smiling. And when you're ready, when the opportunity comes, just be prepared and then give it your best. Don't take it personal. So if it doesn't work out that time, there's always another one. And just, you know, fill your life up with things that make you happy, whether it's music, reading, uh, fishing. I grew up fishing, as what I love, calms me down. Uh, you know, all those things, and that will be reflected in your personality. Go any given audition, they're seeing, they could be seeing up to 100 people. So you got to find a way to make yourself stand out and be appropriate to the character. Find the parts of you that are right for that role. And then just wait. And one day your, your bell will be rung. Your name will be called. It is, it's because it's fascinating for you with your, just your varied amount of roles from horror to, to action to, and of course, stage plays. Um, do you take, you know, each opportunity, do you kind of sit there and go, okay, you know, I, I'm going to maybe be in this horror movie. Like, how do you decide what to do? I'm sure you're getting so many well, things. Yeah. I got a great team and we sit down and we discuss it in terms of film and television. I just make sure that each time I, I go in front of the camera is different than the role I did before. I'm a character actor. Okay. Uh, when it comes to film and TV, man, I just like, that's why I've never been on a series. I don't, I'm not interested in playing this, even though it's a lot of money, I'm not interested in playing the yeah. same character after week because I got so many friends who do it and you'd be surprised how many of them are bored to tears. Okay. Nothing again. Yeah. I mean, Nothing. if you're doing it for 150 episodes, it's probably good money, but then you're, it's, are you fulfilled? Uh, you're not, I, 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 I've been blessed to see so many different people and, and travel around the world. Boy Scout, I went to the World Jamboree, which was in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I've seen so many cultures and I think it's our job as actors to, hold our mirror up to the different people that we encounter and then try to find a way to, um, to, uh, give them joy. Like I, I shot a movie in the Ukraine, um, mm-hmm. seven years ago. And my experience being in the Ukraine is such a beautiful country. Uh, it's also, it also has the most sunflower field of any place in the world. And I remember like my, my driver, driving the set, said, you got to stop it. I get a picture. And I was in the middle of this line. And I can't find this picture today. I looked everywhere. And it's ah. not in my group crowd, but I know I was there. So I'm just saying that now with it being a war torn environment, you never know where you're placed and why you're going to be there. Um, and that's what I love. I love just like, I'm looking forward to going to Scotland and working with John Malkovich. And Tom yeah. Derringer. <laughs> what is that? You, you mentioned that. Like, can you tell us any more about that project that you have coming yeah, up? Or? It's called Loch Ness. Um, okay. Not necessarily about that, but it's about a child who's grown up who returns remembering something about 
that area, and I play a salty sea captain. Uh, it's a great story, and um, it's more of a fable. But we're going to be there mm-hmm. for almost a month. And then after that, I got to go to Stockholm to work on a, uh, continue working on a video game that I'm doing in that country. I've been over there twice so far. I got to go back for the third time. And how, I mean, that's voice acting. Is that, do you still get kind of, no, I, I guess, like that, a different fun out of it? Or Yeah, it's just great because these are characters that, listen, I'm a gamer, all right? And right. I know, what do you play? What do you play? Mostly sports, NBA. Um, I'm right now, so. I'm doing a lot of baseball because my character here in the play is an ex-baseball player. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a, a major ex-baseball player. So, right. I, you know, I do things that make me happy, man. <laughs> you know, I got cats. <laughs> I, I um, rescue cats. I love That's my awesome. music. I Cadillac Green Gretz guitar that I like to string in my private time. All right. Well, one I thing you music. did mention is fishing so i went on twitter here quick i'm like guys you got to give me what's the best fishing lakes leaser lake l-e-a-s-e-r l-e-a-s-e-r lake that's the one i'm getting a lot of that's near it's in lehigh valley it's maybe 20 or so minutes away from where you are i'm guessing do they do do they rent equipment out there and stuff boats um, I know that if you, they might, I, I believe that they might, but I can, you know, I can even email you something too. If, uh, if okay. we get some better Thanks. recommendations, get up but there is a lot of great fishing. Yeah. I need to do something and you know, well, we only get one day off. That's okay. Hey. But still we can open <laughs> the theater to six thirty at night. So, so I, hey, I want to make sure I know, I know that you're a busy guy. I know that you have uh, things you need to do and get off to um, rehearsal. And yeah, we got, I have a six hour rehearsal block today. They, uh, great. That's great. And just, we're going to make sure that everyone uh, who does watch this, they, they can get this information in the notes, but the fences does preview at 7 30 PM on July 27th and 28th. And opening is Friday, July 29th at 7.30. That's correct. And correct. you can get can all I that get information. Oh, sure, go ahead. Can I get on I would like to name my cast if I can. because these Absolutely, please do. Okay, we got myself. We've got a brother named uh, Sean Cockrell. we got the great Ella Joyce. Wonderful young talents, Brandon Edward Burton and Tyler Fauntleroy, well-trained. Brian D. Coates, who is my brother, my brother from another mother, who is one of the hardest people in, in the theater I know, and a young local talent who's playing uh, our daughter, Elon Annam. Okay, so directed by Ryan Quinn, stage managed by lovely Aaron Cockrell. So there we go. Okay, everybody, come witness this. This is thing fantastic. With- no, I'm gonna, have, I hope I can get a ticket. You will get a ticket. I'm sure that uh, Christina will hook you up. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll hook you up with some uh, good fishing lakes, and we can we'll make a trade. <laughs> uh, but great. I'll make it. If she can't do it, I'll Well, in, in all honesty, uh, Tony, thank you so much. Like, I, and I genuinely mean this. Like, You're an actor who myself and my wife and friends of mine – um, have always known about honestly since we were teenagers. You're you're somebody I really respect. I, I love all the, the, the different. See me do what I really love, and then you can go and watch all the horror movies you want. Okay, <laughs> deal. I will make that deal because we're gonna. I was we were going through your IMDb list. We're like we have to have a, a Tony Todd marathon, so um, uh, we will yeah. have to include that as part of it. Thank you very 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 much. Thank you so much. Uh, all the best. Thank you so much for taking thank some time with us. And, and we'll, you, uh, yeah, hopefully come, we'll talk soon. Thank you for getting back to me with that link. I was panicking for a second. I said, where was it? It's Jesus Christ. <laughs> Absolutely. No problem. All right. Have a great day. Pleasure talking to you, my friend. Thank you so much again to Tony Todd. That was amazing. Um, it's not every day you get to talk to somebody who you've watched numerous, numerous times uh, in movies throughout your life fantastic 
so happy he took the time to do that. And please be sure to visit pashakespeare.org as August Wilson Spence's is previewing on July 27th and 28th and opening night is July 29th. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you to all of our sponsors and we'll